everybody. This is Chuck, and I appreciate your time stopping by my channel. As you know, I always enjoy uh, showing something that I've learned and hopefully uh, teach somebody something. Um, I really like to educate, and I like to be educated. So this is uh, a, a Home Shop Machinist magazine from 1984, and uh, I've got you know just I've got lots of them so I, I, I peruse them in the evening uh, always trying to learn well we're going to talk about a temporary self-locking stub mandrel and there's the, the cover picture of it right there so this is uh, if you don't have a set of mandrels or if you need to make a mandrel uh, to hold a uh, part and uh, we'll move over to the lathe. I think first I'll take you over to the drawer just to show you the variety of manuals I have. And then uh, we'll get it set up on the lathe and, lathe and talk about how to uh, build this guy. All right, we'll be right back. So uh, here's uh, the list of drawer that has mandrels in it. And um, there's these types of mandrels. Let's see, where are you guys? These types of mandrels that uh, are tapered and it spreads this collar open so that you can fit to a variety of different sizes of diameters and they're center drilled so that you can run it between centers. That's one type and I've got a full selection of them there all the way down to there's a little guy this one's for a half inch to 11 sixteenths and three eighths to half inch. So I got some small guys, and then the the uh, other type of mandrel is a shaft type mandrel that's tapered. It's, it's got a very slight taper to it. And uh, is this one marked what it's for? Uh, this one's worn quite a bit. Let's see. And the box locked on me. Well, we're not going to go back in there. Anyway, these are tapered, and there's usually sizes on them. Again, they have center drills in them, so you can run them between centers. And they have the uh, flat here to put a dog on it. And uh, these are real handy. You have to have a whole assortment of those. And then uh, I, picked up, I picked up this big guy. I've done a video on it in the past. Uh, it's from Germany. Uh, I bought it from a, a, a German machinist that brought everything... Uh, over uh, 30 years ago and I've got a very large one and then I've got some smaller units also pretty pretty unique uh, piece and uh, happy to have it in my uh, in my tooling I've used it on occasion already so with that said now we'll get over to the uh, lathe that's a little introduction on mandrels okay well, you can see in the lathe, I've got a round stock there, our stub mandrel, and it's got a flat cut on it, and it's also got a center drill in it. And I've already mounted it once, but I haven't done any turning on it, so you'll see that live here. But here's a uh, pulley off of a vehicle uh, for a serpentine belt. It's just something I had in the drawer. And... Uh, it's an odd diameter. I think it's uh, 668 thousandths, if I remember correctly. So to create a stub mandrel, of course, you need to turn your stub mandrel to that diameter so that it'll, the unit will fit on there. All right? Go either way. Okay? So that's the first thing. Have a nice, nice fit on the unit. The next item that makes it work is a little pin. So I'm sliding that pin in. You can see it right there. Sliding the pin in and all you do is turn and now you can see I can turn the you can turn the uh, chuck with it. If you want to release it all you do is turn the other way and it comes apart. Come on. the pin stayed on there okay so let's uh, we'll talk about the math on this and stuff but let's uh, let's try turning this and seeing 
what we get, how it works, how well it locks. So it pins back in, just a slight turn, and the unit's locked. Okay, it's going to get a little noisy. I'm going to turn on the uh, turn on the old Monarch here. The Monarch's a uh, motor generator unit, so it's a loud unit, but uh, it is what it is. I'm going to go th turn on the uh, three-phase first. And let's see, this unit is steel, magnet sticking to it, just to uh, make sure what we got there. I don't know how hard it is, that'll be interesting to find out. So uh, let's pick a, a tool to uh, go after it with. And let's try a piece of high, let's try some high speed steel first. Alright, a little noise. the noise while I try to talk here. So all in all, that material seems fairly soft, to be honest with you, but uh, the uh, pin definitely locked. Let's see if it'll unlock. Actually the pin right there in the center, wiggle this a little bit, it unlocked. Caught the pin on the back side. Hey, pretty slick I'm liking it so let's let's uh, one other thing that this mandrel can do is here you can see that the face of the pulley is flush with the mandrel if I was to pull the pulley forward if I needed to work this face or radius this corner this uh, this uh, interior bore there pin goes back in lock it and yeah, let's fire back up and give it a go. <laughs> Now if you had a, let's say it's a much deeper situation that you need to mill, pull this back off. I got lucky and caught the pin again. With the center in it, this stub mandrel could be much longer and the center could be out here supporting it. The flat could be much longer dependent upon the part that you're turning on here. So, pretty slick. If you don't have any mandrels, you need to make a mandrel, very simple to do. But there's a little math involved. It's a 12 to 1 ratio. And what do you mean by a 12 to 1 ratio? 
you take the diameter of the part, uh, excuse me, the diameter of the bore or your stub mandrel, either one, whichever one you want to call it, take the diameter of that bore and divide it by 12. It's a 12 to 1 ratio. So when you divide it by 12, you're going to get a number, and that number is the amount that you need to take off of the flat here, okay? That's, that's your cut on your flat, and then your pin is basically the difference that fits in there. Come on, stay there, pin. Plus or minus, right? Because once, once the the pin is the pin is actually it can't be taller than the bore, right? It has to be within the bore. But once the unit slides on, you can see the pin, and when it locks, the pin is moved and it's gone over center, and that's what causes the lock. When you release, the pin is free. So 12 to 1 ratio. Give it a try. Pretty simple to do and uh, may get you out of a jam here uh, when you need to hold apart on some situations. So hope you enjoyed. Always uh, love uh, explaining something that I just learned and uh, keeping my uh, arsenal. Catch you again soon on another uh, upcoming video. Thanks for your time. So I wrote in the beginning of the video a little bonus information at the end of the video, and here it is. My friend and fellow YouTuber, uh, Vince Ender, recently contacted this company as he needed to replace the head on his DRO on his lathe. And I saw the note on Instagram. I gave Vince a call, and uh, Vince said these guys were great, and uh, you basically write, sales at uh, Icarondo, I think is how you say it. Um, timing wise, if you write in the evening, uh, they're at work. Uh, this is Pacific Standard Time. So I text, I sent him an email at around six, six or seven o'clock in the evening. And uh, he got uh, basically uh, immediately back uh, to me. And uh, we went back and forth on a couple of emails. And uh, unfortunately, as you can see here in the text, that uh, I was hoping to upgrade my DRO. Uh, my DRO is a little Minotoyo. It's sim very simple, it just, uh, but it doesn't do any uh, math or whole, whole circles or anything like that. But the service uh, that Vince got from this company, and I have to tell you, the service I got via email back and forth was outstanding. And so if... Uh, you need some assistance on a DRO. They, they modified a DRO to work with his, um, his scales. And uh, that's what I was hoping to do the same thing. But uh, that's the company to get a hold of. So I thought I'd share that with you.